Hi everyone, my name is Brian, um, and my, se not senior design, but my keystone is with the engineering senior design, um, and our project was developing an ECG sensor and smartphone application to monitor the cardiac health of remote patients. Um, my PI was actually uh, Edward Medry, who was the design engineering leader at Phillips North America, but uh, we also had Di Dr. Diane McCarthy, uh, who is the director of BTEC helping with us. So thanks for them. And my senior design group is here in the back, so thank you for you guys. Um, to begin, uh, we would like, I would like to talk about the problem and its significance. Um, first of all, we wanted to target a population that uh, really got overlooked by the medical uh, industry. And so first thing we looked at was patients that are physically separated uh, from their primary care physicians. So uh, some affected population of this is, for example, rural populations who might live very far away from their primary care physician, the elderly who might not be able to travel to go to the, their doctors, and college students such as like us who, you know, might come from a different state, so we don't have access to our primary care physicians. And we wanted to think about how we could support these populations specifically. Um, and one thing we realized is um, heart health is very important. <laughs> and so we wanted to create, you know, a new ECG, which is the electrodiagram that measures the electrical impulses of your heart. Um, and we wanted to be able to monitor this heart health. And the uh, industry standard is obviously the five lead, which just creates five cross-sectional um, vectors across your heart and gives you a very accurate measure measurement about your heart health. Uh, we then use AWS, which is Amazon Web, Web Services, uh, which is a cloud computing service. Um, and we use this to store and uh, store patient data in a very secure manner and use this to, you know, um, allow the patients to send it to their doctors. And finally, um, all these things we're doing is um, called Internet of Things, which is the technology that strives to connect a variety of things, such as our ECG device and the phone application. Um, through internet and different ways of communications. And what we came up with our proposed solution is um, to design a five lead electrode uh, configuration with wireless connection to smartphone app. So what's novel about this is that normally when you go to the doctor, uh, you would have to connect your ECG up to a huge gigantic monitor and there's a lot of wires and we're trying to cut all that physical wire out. So all you have is this black box that hosts our brain, the um, ESP32, which I will get into later, but just basically there's only five um, ele uh, five electrodes on your body and it measures your heart rate, uh, not heart rate, but all your heart activity and it shows up on your phone. And so our aims is to create this five lead ECG and we want it to be as accurate, as clinically accurate as possible. So then we afterwards ran a couple experiments to test how good our data was. Um, and so to talk about our approach a little, um, first we started with the physical device itself. So we prototyped the five lead electrode and it kind of looks like that in the picture right there. Um, there's a box where we host our hardware and then the leads coming out where you place the electrodes on your body. And then we decided that it's really hard to know where exactly to place your electrodes. Um, so we used a silicon to create a patch that you can actually just stick on yourself and it already has the electrode placements. So, you know, as a patient, all you have to do remotely is to put this patch on. And then we also connected, uh, created this system, including the phone application that takes all the data collections from that ECG device, sends it to AWS, which the IoT core, which then does all the functions that the signal quality processing as well as storage into a specific database and also send you know alerts to the patients on uh, through the mobile application and so some of the metric we measure use to measure success is f obviously without instructing the users where exactly to put the electrodes if we wanted to see if they're able to get good data by just putting on the patch um, we wanted to see the latency through all the cloud-based data transfer we obviously want this to be in real time Right, so we also wanted to see how long it took from actual physical measurement to you know display on the phone. Um, so first, uh, actually, before that, first of all, we did a preliminary research into the market size and 
the forecast in the U.S. just because we were working with Philips and because their industry, they really wanted to see if this product is something that's viable in the market. And so we looked at not just the ECG equipment and management systems, but also remote patient monitoring. I saw that a lot of other um, coalition students are also doing, uh, you know, telehealth and remote patient monitoring. So um, it's, it's the next big thing. Um, we did a FMEA, so we basically took our system and everything we designed and thought about what is the most, you know, what are the most significant problems that we might have with it and how we can address that. And the result is we created this app. This is just a login screen and uh, register and login, and there's actual um, data that I'll show you later. Um, we were also able to create the um, hardware, which this is just a module for a high-pass filter that we're using to take the ECG data directly and basically filter out all the noise, such as um, you know high-frequency or low-frequency noises, so the data you get is exactly what the doctor needs. And this is the result. Um, it's, I think, flipped here, but <laughs> you, we get data in real time um, showing on our phone right away, and we actually wanted to test it if uh, you know, it was accurate. So we did an R-peak analysis, which just means you kind of look at the peaks of you know, each uh, line there, and that just means it's your heart rate. And we measured you know, a person's heart rate normally, and then we used the app to um, monitor the patient's heart rate, and it was, I think, plus or minus two beats per minute which is exactly what we were aiming for. Um, and also to look at the latency, uh, we looked at uh, both the con uh, basically the console of the device itself and the console of AWS and the phone. So we can see when the data prints, how much time it took for that specific data point to print all the way. And it was only around 200 milliseconds, which is not very significant for heart monitoring. And finally, I wanted to bring the device into demo, but unfortunately, the physical hardware got uh, fried, so <laughs> we don't have it here. <laughs> but thank you. Any questions? So, Brian, you mentioned um, one of the things that you wanted to, to use as a comparison point was heart rate. What, what, what might the next one be? I don't really know what's measured in an e e ECG. Yes. But. Um, so the heart rate was just chosen just because it was the easiest thing to get. Yeah. As you can tell from the lines, you can just see like the peaks just tells you what the heart rate is. And you, know, you measure it within a time frame, and then you can compare heart rates. I think the next thing we wanted to do was, so there's after the big R peak, there's different peaks like the, I forget what it's called, but we want to measure those specific data points are exactly what's showing on an actual ECG as well. Um, what do you think is the biggest challenge of implementing this? And also, could you go back to like the results, the chart where you have like all the potential problems? Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, um, there were a lot of problems with <laughs> it. Um, the physical device itself was really hard to make um, just because, first of all, it was really hard to test. Um, we didn't exactly know where to put the electrodes ourselves. Um, that's why we came up with the patch idea. Um, and then we also had to make sure that, you know, everything, trying to keep everything real time so that, uh, you know, keeping latency as low as possible because it's actually transferring through many, many different devices from the ECG device to you know some server for AWS and back to your phone, um, so we were worried you know the points you were seeing on your phone was too late and it really doesn't help you at all. Um, so trying to shorten that down was definitely one of the biggest challenges. Um, so I have I guess it's two parts, but. Um, do you see this being something that people like would get from their doctor or from like a CVS? And should I be looking for this in the store <laughs> to take my ECG regularly? Yeah, um, that's a good question. So um, Philips asked us to do some sort of you know remote monitoring device, and we chose the ECG. And um, this is kind of like a proof of concept, right? I'm sure they're not going to be putting this like our specific <laughs> model in the market, but. Um, they, I think they are actually working on a clinical 12-lead 
ECG that people can use remotely. Um, I would like to think it's from our idea. <laughs> so yes, it's 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 something I think would be more you know available that not prescribed, so you don't have to go to a doctor to get or anything. You can just get it over the counter, um, but it's you know accurate enough that doctors will use the data from it. And uh, could you just say a little bit more about the projection? So I wonder if this might not be one of those technologies that once it is available, say do-it-yourself ECG at home, that then mm -hmm. the demand goes up tremendously, right? Like could it be something like, you know, I'm going to do this every month and put it in my healthcare online thing? Or, or where do those, um, you know, projections come from? Yeah, I, this projection was just a market-based analysis, so it did not take into account of how, you know, the public might react if this becomes available. So that's definitely something that we should look into as well. Um, but I do think, you know, it, if that becomes more available, like you said, it, it might, you know, increase the de demand and make market size even bigger. Any more uh, questions? All right, if not, I'll thank Brian again. Thank Great you. talk. <laughs>